Hi, I'm Cora. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here today with the books that I ended up reading in June. <laughs> it's gonna be a long one. I read 13 books. So grab some popcorn, some beef jerky, grab yourself some iced tea, and get ready to listen to the things that I read this month. <laughs> okay, so you probably know if you've watched more than one of my haul video or my wrap up videos that I like to keep just some stats <laughs> about the things that I've read. This month I read 13 books. As I said, uh, that ended up being about 4,807 pages, which is just about 160 pages a day. It makes sense. My husband had coronavirus at the very beginning of the month, so we had to spend a couple weeks uh, you know, making sure that we stayed away from civilization. So I, we, we watched a ton of movies and I read a lot of books. Uh, I read a lot. I have this page goal for the year. It was my goal to read 35,000 pages. And if I take away what I read this month, um, to reach my goal, I have to read 6,526 more pages. That's it. That's like, I could do that in two months if I tried. So congratulations to me. Six of the books that I read were horror, three were thrillers. I read one true crime book, two fantasy books, and a science fiction book. Another one of my goals that I made for myself at the beginning of the year was to try to read more books that I owned previous to this year. So I did end up reading six books that I already owned, which is great. But that also means seven of them. Yeah, seven of them uh, I didn't own previous to this year, but there were some new releases that I needed to get to and some arcs that I had to read. So I'll get into that. I read quite a few vintage books this year, this month, <laughs> this year. Oh God. Uh, so the oldest book I read was actually Dune, which was published in 1965. Then I had a book published in 1976 a book from 1984, 1987, 1994, then we go to 2000, and then we jump all the way to 2016, 2018, 2019, and I read four books that are new releases or are going to be released soon. Actually, I think all of them are out by now, even the arcs that I ended up reading, I think. I'll get into it. So uh, my average for these 13 books I read was a 3.7 star rating. I don't really get into star rating so much when I talk about books on my channel anymore just because I feel like it's just so, I don't know, like it could, I could rate things based on the mood that I'm in. If I'm going into a reading slump, uh, if it's a genre I don't really l like and I didn't know it, you know, stuff like that. So really this month it was, I either really loved this, these books or I thought that they were just okay. Uh, the formats of the books I ended up reading this month, 11 of them were novels. One was a novella and one was a manga. 12 of them were considered adult books and one was YA. I read 10 physical books. I listened to one audiobook and I read two eBooks. Then I also had my five star prediction for this month was no Exit by Taylor Adams. I'll get into that. And I read uh, the the buzzword readathon word for this month uh, was, and actually it wasn't a word, it was um, a title. So you read something with like Mr. Mrs. Lady, and then I chose Queen. For, so Queen of the, the Queen of the Cicadas by V. Castro. I'll get into it. I'll get into all of this. Let's get into it. So first up, just because it's off the top of my pile, Evidence of Love by John Bloom and Jim Atkinson. Oh my gosh. I love this book so much. Uh, I have heard of the, you know, I mean, this is a true crime book. So we're talking about this incident that happened where um, there were these two ladies who knew each other from church. Candy Montgomery and Betty Gore and one ends up having an affair with the other's husband and then one murders the other one and it was 
uh, it takes place in Texas in the 1980s and boy this was just I mean the story itself is very compelling but the way that the author set this all out the authors I guess it was just so good and I loved reading it very sad story and um there's a little surprise at the end um I can't say that I don't know just just the story that the woman who committed the murder tells people like why this happened it's just so bizarre and like I want to believe her I want to believe what she says so you'll have to read this for yourself or I don't know listen I'm sure there's a podcast episode about it I'm pretty sure that's how I heard about it um initially and then I heard let me let me look it up so I can give you the real deets on this so it's going to be called love and death it's a limited series that HBO is coming out with uh let's see it's going to star Elizabeth Olsen which is why I mean I like the story but when I heard that she was starring in it I really wanted to watch it because I've recently fallen in love with her after watching WandaVision. Okay, well just scanning through this article, I can't see if it if it tells me when that's happening, but it's happening soon. So I'm very excited for that. Okay, next I'd like to tell you about an ebook that I read. This book was previously published and then went out of print. And then Tor Nightfire picked it up and they're reprinting it. It is Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And you might uh, recognize her name from Mexican Gothic, which came out last year, which I really liked. However, I didn't love Certain Dark Things. Um, in Certain Dark Things, it has, it has such a rich world and like this mythos and this history. And it's set in kind of um, alternate Mexico City there's like, I don't know, it's like neon noir, like grungy, and there's vampires, and there's lots of different kinds of vampires, and it's very cool because the um, abilities that these vampires have is really linked to uh, where they live on the globe. So, for example, um, one of the main characters in this, Adel, she is, uh, she comes from a long line of indigenous Mexican vampires and so her ability is that she kind of turns into almost like a bird and she can grow wings but like she has this proboscis that comes out of her mouth that sucks blood and it's so cool but then there's also um, these vampires from Europe that um, gosh what do they call them necros and they're almost like shark like like they have these rows and rows of teeth and when they bite somebody if if any of their bodily fluids gets into a human they temporarily well i guess until they die because they basically become living dead zombies and can will do whatever the necros wants them to do it's just so like she she built this world it was so imaginative and awesome and I just want to read like books and books about the different types of vampires she came up with but then the plot so Adel is on the run uh, her whole family has been slain and uh, in this book they kind of have um, clans sort of the vampires do so th it's like very their va their family and their clan is very important to them and her clan is slain by a group of necros so she's running from them she gets into mexico city which is vampire free it's kind of like a city state you can't easily get in and out but she somehow gets in and then she's having trouble getting out when the necros follows her into the city so she kind of befriends this human and he's trying to help her out uh so i don't know i i thought that the plot itself was really weak and it just couldn't compare to the richness of the history that uh sylvia created for this world so that was really disappointing i didn't really like it i didn't like the plot but like the world building was so great so i don't know i don't know what to tell you about this um you know it kind of evened itself out because there was enough about the history um 
dispersed throughout the story that it kept me going but like the plot i i just i don't know i i was really uninterested in the plot so that was kind of a womp womp i don't know the cover is so gorgeous and i don't know if she wrote another book like set in this world i would absolutely read it all right next a book that i didn't love as much as i expected this is blood of elms by andres sapkowski uh let's see who is the translator here i wrote it down translator danuja stock thank you danuja for bringing us this wonderful piece of literature this is a fantasy book this is what the witcher video game and the witcher tv series was based on so in this i was actually sort of surprised because it seems like the main character is really uh this child named siri who the witcher has saved because it's like prophesized that she's going to do great things and so we're really just following i don't know we don't exactly follow siri but like everyone in this story like their goal is to make sure siri is okay and at points we do uh, follow what Siri's doing too. So I mean that's really it like it's Siri being trained as a witcher and a magician. So That's it. <laughs> that's all this is about. Maybe I would have enjoyed it more if I hadn't read or if I hadn't watched the TV series, but I don't know. I felt like this lacked a lot of world building uh, you're just kind of thrown in there and these people have a history and you don't know about it and the author doesn't really give it up and this world seems so chaotic but you don't get much about it and I just I needed more back story uh, and it's kind of funny that he doesn't really go into that because there's lots of just scenes where he is really involved in these tiny little I don't know it's like Siri training with the sword for 20 pages and stuff like that so I don't know I don't know how I felt about it I didn't hate it but I also didn't love it uh maybe the second book will be a little bit better I don't know I will read it eventually next off my pile is a book I actually just finished this morning this is The Godsend by Bernard Taylor and okay I'm gonna tell you that I really liked this a lot uh, this is an older book. It was published in 1976, and I believe uh, this is this says the classic first novel by Bernard Taylor. So I'm assuming you know this is his debut book, and I liked it so much. And I'm going to get into it further in a trope video next month. So keep your eye out for that. Then I also read With Teeth by Brian Keane. This is a new novella that came out just. Hmm, I can't remember if it came out in May or June, but um, it's actually like a really short novella and then it has two even shorter stories that are set in kind of the same um, universe. However, Brian Keane says that like all of his stuff is loosely based in the same universe and this is only the third thing I've read by him. So I guess I just haven't seen that because I've read Castaways, which takes place on an island and there's like cannibals. And then I read Ghoul, which I really liked. That one was like a coming of age story about um, these kids finding like this monster in a cemetery. And then there is this, which takes place in West Virginia. And uh, oh boy, I think what got me in this is that literally half of this novella, and I'm not exaggerating, it's like 50 pages of this 98 page I think it was 98 pages, 98 page novella was an info dump on the eight characters in this book. There were so many characters and none of them were very different. They were all middle-aged men, hard up, down on their luck, um, looking to make some money. So there's a lot of information about them. And then, you know, it's like they, they accidentally ha like, happen across some vampires living in this hollow and so it's like all these people just like so much information about them and then guess what they're all being murdered by vampires and it's like 
why 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 did we need so much backstory on these eight people for you know um a slaughter to happen uh so i don't know how i felt about this um i thought it was just okay i it was they had some great gore uh once we got past like the 50 pages of info dump basically i was really excited about what was going on the vampire stuff is so creepy and i loved it uh and i really loved the ending too the ending was really good uh it has a little it has a little bit of a twist that i didn't see coming i don't know um i mean the good doesn't outweigh the bad it just kind of balances out i guess so i mean i'd give this a mid a um, three star if i was rating it absolutely love the cover but yep yeah, that's it that's with teeth let's get to a book that i really liked actually it's gonna be short two because i did a whole review on this so i will leave a link to the review my full review in the description if you'd like to watch that but this is ace of spades by farida ebiki imidi and this was a ya thriller that didn't feel too ya you know i know um a lot of adults especially in the horror community it's a little bit different uh for people who exclusively read like YA fantasy and stuff like that but I know a lot of horror readers tend to uh, disparage YA because it feels too young. Of course it is written for teenagers so if you are not a teenager what what did we expect? But I will say that this one did not feel too juvenile. This is about two the only two black students at this prestigious academy. It's called Nivius Academy. One uh, Chiamaka, her parents are both doctors, so uh, e even though she's a pl the one of the only black students, she kind of has an easier time um, because she comes from a more affluent background. Uh, but Devon, he's there on a scholarship, so he has to work extra extra hard if he wants to reach his goals. And then uh, at the very beginning of their senior year, all the student body keeps getting these text messages from someone who calls themselves aces and aces starts blackmailing people and then as we move forward in the story it the aces seems to really just target devon and chiamaka and aces is gonna stop at nothing to expose any secrets that they have and this was a great thriller i i think my only complaint is that the ending really wrapped up super quick and I wish maybe it would have been a little more tense and suspenseful, kind of like drawn that suspense out. It didn't, but I still liked it. Uh, I thought this was a really great YA thriller. Okay, then I'm gonna talk about what might be my least, the least favorite thing I read this month. Unfortunately, this was an arc I got off NetGalley. It is Queen of the Cicadas by V. Castro. And this came out at the very end of June. I think I saw June 22nd. So it should be out by now. It's being published by Flame Tree Press. And I was drawn to this because it talks about um, this urban legend of qu the Queen of the Cicadas. I'm getting all tongue-tied. And... Um, so it's kind of told in like dual's perspective so one is like i think it takes place in like maybe 2018 i don't know it's not like current day but maybe a couple years before current day and it's a woman named belinda and she's attending her best friend's wedding at this what used to be a farm that was turned into a wedding venue so you know a typical wedding venue type of place but it has kind of a sordid history because in the 1950s there was a migrant worker named Milagros and she was murdered on the property like brutally tortured and murdered and so the other perspective we follow is Milagros before and during and after her death and I really 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 loved Milagros's timeline and I really, really, really did not care about Belinda's timeline. Uh, so like Belinda's kind of, she wants to get to the bottom of this urban legend because it's something that she even heard about uh, as a child growing up. And I don't know, this story, it kept 
coming to what seemed like a conclusion. So it's like they wrapped everything else up and then it was like something else would happen. And so they'd go wrap that up and then something else would happen. And it was like, it seemed like three or four different stories it was broken up and it felt disjointed and like I said I just really did not care about Belinda. I didn't care about her. I was much more compelled by Mila Gross's story and her death and I don't really know if I like V. Castro's writing unfortunately. It, it feels flat but also she writes these like beautifully horrible monsters and she uses a lot of uh, indigenous Mexican folklore that makes it really interesting. But then it's like, I don't know, that just does not make up for how I feel about her writing, I guess. I don't know. I feel really conflicted about it. <laughs> There's a lot of bugs in this, which creeps me out a lot, which I liked, but I don't know. It just like couldn't, it couldn't make up for how I felt about Belinda's timeline, which was the majority of the story. And then the end, if you've read it, maybe we should talk about it because the end is so strange. I don't know. I don't know. It's like the last 50 pages I definitely could have done without. Uh, but also, I don't know. Like I said, it, it, it kept feeling like it would come to a conclusion and then it wasn't done. So I don't know. I don't know how, I'm never telling you not to read a book. Like I said, V. Castro does make these grotesque, beautiful monsters, but I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to pick up any more of her books. I don't really jive with her writing. I don't think, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's the queen of the cicadas. I feel sad that I don't like this more. Okay, next on my list. Boy, this is going to be a video for sure. Uh, the Pandora Room by Christopher Golden. This is a sequel to Ararat and oh my gosh, I was so confused when I was telling you guys about this uh, when I talked about my summer horror episode because this is like titled the Ben Walker series and it's it, it follows Ben Walker and so I was thinking because it's been a couple years since I read Ararat, I was thinking that Ben Walker was a character that died in the first book so I was like is this a prequel because I'm pretty sure he's dead and I really got it all mixed up he did not he made it out of the first book obviously because this takes place after the events of Ararat <laughs> it's just oh boy uh so everything I told you about this was a lie basically just kidding it wasn't uh this takes place in uh Iraq so I picked this as a summer read because I thought possibly the environment would play into what what happened in the books, like uh, what the plot. I thought it would play into the plot and it didn't, but that was okay. Uh, I just ended up thinking this was okay. It's about a, an archaeologist. She's with the team excavating this like ancient city, right? And then they find this hidden room. And in this room is uh, a jar. And there's like a warning saying that this is Pandora's box. And um, it holds all the bad things of mankind and humanity in it. So like, stay out of this room and don't break the jar. And um, of course, like the jar gets a little bit broke. So the jar is broken and bad things start happening to the team. And so it's like, there's... They're in this and they also just can't leave this underground city because above them is a group of people who want to get their hands on the jar to destroy it and like the archaeologists obviously do not want that and so they're kind of hiding and hoping that they go away. Uh, they're waiting for reinforcements to come so it's definitely like an isolation thing then also dealing with the contents of the jar. I I love that part of it. I love the jar and the isolation and being stuck with nowhere to go and things are going terribly wrong. But this is not a very long book, but it feels long-winded. Uh, there are, especially, especially towards the end when they're trying to make an escape 
and then I don't know it just takes so long it takes so long there's just more than more than one part that's just it just takes so long to get through it feels sloggy and I also did feel that way at points in Ararat but I don't know like the background of it is so compelling like the historical mystery is so compelling now for the book that was my five star prediction for this month this was no exit by taylor adams this was a thriller this one also dealt with isolation this is about a young woman named darby and she oh boy she is trying to make it through a snowstorm through the colorado mountains she's trying to make it to her mother who is having a surgery to remove cancer a cancerous cell a cancerous mass i suppose and she gets stuck in a snowstorm at this rest stop and there are just a couple other people who are stuck there and darby is just you know she's pissed she's really upset that she is stuck here but there's no way that she can safely move on uh the plows aren't going to be there for hours it's um getting to be i mean it's dark it's evening time it's the winter and so it's just really unsafe to be driving anywhere. And um, at one point she goes outside and she finds that one of the vehicles of the people who's stuck in the rest stop with her has a dog kennel in it. And she sees a little hand sticking out of the dog kennel and it just uh, kind of goes downhill from there. She finds obviously um, a child locked in that. And so she has to find out um who's done it uh and why and stuff like that so i thought that this was just all right it just didn't bring anything new to the table uh it was entertaining i read the whole thing but there wasn't really any twists or turns that i was very surprised about um yeah that's it <laughs> okay the next one I want to tell you about is an audiobook I listened to, Stormfront by Jim Butcher. This is the beginning of his Dresden Files series, and uh, my brother-in-law has been bothering me to read it for years, I'm pretty sure. So uh, I finally, like I just checked the last time he talked to me about it, I checked to see if uh, the library had it, and they did. So I, you know, listened to the audiobook. And this is about uh, a dude, his name is Harry Dresden. And this is like, it takes place, it's kind of like an urban fantasy, I guess, because it takes place in our world. But now we've realized that there are like witches and vampires and wizards and goblins and fairies that we just like didn't know about before. So they've kind of permeated humanity. And Harry Dresden is a wizard. He is a wizard private detective so he's a wizard dick <laughs> and he is put on the case of a missing husband a woman she's missing her husband and she thinks he might be in danger so while this is all happening he's also uh, asked by the police to help with the the series of murders that's going on where the people are basically it happens during a big storm so this person uses the storm energy to uh create these like huge magical spells and he the person is killing people using these storms so kind of like he's working for this lady he's also working for the police and maybe those two things are connected uh so i thought that this was pretty good he, my brother-in-law told me I probably wouldn't like the first three books, um, but I mean, I liked it. I liked it enough to continue on with the series. Uh, I'm really interested in seeing more of this world and seeing more of the other magical creatures that exist in this world. Uh, I think it's definitely a story that maybe takes itself a little too seriously and i think maybe harry dresden thinks he's a little too charming and clever for his own good uh basically every other character in this book is judged by harry dresden on how they look like men and women both of them and it's kind of funny because every time they describe like what harry dresden is wearing it's like sweatpants and cowboy boots so like this dude 
wearing sweatpants and cowboy boots is really concerned about how everyone else looks which is just kind of funny but I, I ended up liking it uh, I will read the second book and hopefully I like the second book too god I know this is long I'm sorry so next I read The Other Black Girl by Zakiya Delilah Harris uh, this was a thriller. I also did a more in-depth review on that, so I'll leave that in the description, but I will tell you that uh, this is about a woman named Nella. She works in a publishing house. Uh, she's the only black employee, and then she's very excited when another black woman is hired on in her office. Uh, but then things take a turn in her job, and just stuff is getting sort of weird. Uh, just... The people, people are treating her like, like she's in, they're gaslighting her. They're treating her like she's insane about some of these problems that she's having. And she's getting these notes that say, leave Wagner, leave the publishing house now. And she starts to suspect that maybe the new employee, the other black girl might be involved in what's happening to her in her office. So this is really centered on the workplace, but it is a thriller and i really 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 liked it i thought it was great uh it it just hmm, it was a little bit weird and it had a great ending and i really liked it okay only two more books only two more books so i also read this hulk this is tomie by junji ito he of course writes horror manga and this one was really fun, uh, maybe a little bit repetitive because this all centers around Tomie, who it doesn't matter how many times she is murdered, she comes back and all the pieces of her become other Tomie. So like the men that fall in love with Tomie, she is like, she's a succubus and they become obsessed with her to the point of wanting to murder her and chop her up into bits and then like these bits become other Tomies. So uh, these are all basically like vignettes of things that happen to Tomie and uh, yeah I just I liked it. Um, some of the other reviews say repetitive which like I can totally see because it is basically you know the same structure. Tomie uh, meets a man. The man becomes obsessed with Tomie and then the man ends up killing Tomie. But uh, I thought it was fun. He just put it in so many different weird settings and the artwork is great and Tomie is just like such a badass. I think I'm gonna get, um, I think I'm gonna get a Tomie tattoo the next time I do that. So yeah, um, it's a beast. This is like 800 pages but i loved it this is dune by frank herbert and this was a hulking sci-fi written in the 1960s and it is really uh listen i don't read a ton of sci-fi especially older sci-fi but this is touted as being like um something that was a breakthrough for the genre you know something that was just incredibly original and um yeah so this follows a young man named Paul, Paul Atreides, and he is the son of a duke named Leto Atreides. And his mother, Jessica, is something called a Bene Gesserit, which is a witch, but like, you don't want to call her that. But she, I don't know, it's just, man, this is all very, very there's just so much depth to the story it's very hard to give a synopsis but anyways i should shorten it down so we're following paul basically and his family is going to a different planet called arrakis and they have been sort of um fighting with this other family called the harkonnens for years about this planet so the harkonnens currently live on this planet and the Atreides are going to this planet called Arrakis and Arrakis is like this barren desertous planet and it has this thing on it that they call spice which I think might be sort of like cinnamon. Um, the spice gives people strange powers and it's kind of addictive and it's worth great 
great amounts of money because it's very hard to get because where the spice is, there are also these giant like sandworms. And oh boy, it's just, it's very political. Uh, Paul is kind of just, I don't know. I don't really like Paul that much, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's just so, so much in this book. It's, it's so hard to get into. But I didn't love Paul because he is just very smart and good at almost everything. It's just like he's one of those YA dystopian girls, you know what I mean? Who it's like Katniss, like she's born into poverty, but she's good at everything anyways. Uh, but he, he's not born into poverty, but he's very good at most things. And but at the same time, he's very reluctant to like take up this role that's you know, being forced upon him. And so like, I have sympathy. I don't know. I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I guess that's it. If I could get an audiobook of the um, second book, maybe I would continue on to see if I enjoy that more, but didn't love it. I don't know. I didn't think it was bad. It was just a lot of book. It could be uh, the time that it was written in too, but there doesn't seem to be a ton of emotion in these characters. So, I don't know. Um, there are also great big gaps in the timeline where it's like, you come back and it's three years later, or you know, things like that, which I don't know. I didn't love, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Dune. Like I said, this month, it was either things that I didn't really care for or things that I really loved. It was a strange reading month. <laughs> So that is what I ended up reading in June. It was a very strange month. I will be back soon with the books I plan on reading for July. Let me know if you've read any of these books and if you liked any of them. Thanks for listening to my rambling. I hope you guys had a great June and uh, hopefully July will be even better. See you guys later. Bye.